From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. All right, you are back. Yeah, I'm gonna turn you on. All right, let's talk about hallways, doors, and perceptions. The guest is in the hallway every time they come and go from that guest room they're going to stay in. The guest is in the hallway. They see the hallway before they see the room. And what do they do in that hallway? Eh, they look around and have a peek see. What's it all look like here in the hallway? Hallways, doors, and perceptions. I spend a great deal of my decision making in the world of perceptions. It's an old cliche. Look at the hotel through the eyes of the guest. See it as the guest sees it. When you're up on the floors all day and in your office and in and out of meetings and blah, 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 and you do this all the time and you're doing inventory and you're doing all this stuff, after a while it's real easy to kind of let go of that notion, see the hotel through the guest eyes. But you must maintain that viewpoint continually. How do I know what's the most important areas for me to make sure are always clean? I follow the guest pathway. I start at valet or at the front door and I walk into the lobby. I walk to the front desk. I'm looking around to see what I can see as a guest. After I've looked at the closed elevator doors and they open, yeah, I get into that elevator. Now I look at the keypad. Is it shiny and clean or does it have fingerprints all over it? What's the floor look like? I don't know why hotels have elevator floors that look like they belong in a warehouse, but they do. I get off the elevator, I see the landing, there's the mirror, there's the credenza and the plants. I make a right or a left. The first thing I do when I'm a guest in a hotel, I start looking at the carpet. What your hallway carpet's gonna look like gonna tell me a whole lot about what my guest room is going to be like. And when I see little spots and stains and splatters, spills and cuts and threads that need to be clipped, I know they're probably not going to be very detail oriented in my guest room. Why? They're not here paying attention to my first perceptions. They're not seeing this through my eyes. I can see this. I don't know why they can't see it. These are the perceptions. Then you go to the door. Is the doorknob clean? Is the door clean? You go in and you have your guest experience in inside of the hotel room. But before they ever get to the room, they're making judgments. They're dealing in their perceptions. So I wanna talk, oh, I'm gonna talk about remotes here in just a minute. Three different slogans or mantras or quotable quotes that I want you to get into your little brain box. A guest doesn't know what they're looking at, but they see it. Number two to keep in your little brain box. What is the definition of clean? How do you define Clean. Clean is the lack of evidence that anybody has ever been in this hotel room before. Let's review. A guest doesn't know what they're looking at, but they see it. Clean is the lack of evidence that anybody's ever been in this hotel room before. Number three, and probably the most important, and it really is the, uh, the, the best way to enter into what I'm going to speak to you about, hallways, doors, and perceptions. Never let a guest see something they cannot get over. Never, ever let a guest see something that they won't be able to get over. So what does a guest see? They're on their way to their guest room, they just checked in, had a great experience at the front desk. They're cruising down the hall with their little luggage. On their way to their guest room, oh look, there's a, a room attendant cart, there's a maid's cart. Oh, the door's open. What does the guest wanna do? Same thing you wanna do, same thing that I wanna do. I wanna look in that guest room and see what the rooms look like. How big are the rooms here? Is it as good as mine? But before I get to the doors that are open that a guest can look into, let's talk about your hallways. You know as well as I do, when you tell the room attendants there are spots and stains on your hallway carpet in your room section, they have a section. Uh, you need to get those up. Oh no, that's the, that's the houseman he extracts once a month. That's not my responsibility. Oh, there's no time, Mr. Abel. No time to clean carpets, no. Well, that's because you haven't trained your people how to clean carpets. It's really simple. You Did you know that you can spot, and I'm talking about clean the whole rug. That is the houseman's job or the floor tech. Spotting carpets will cut down on your need to extract carpets, which is a big job. Big machine, got to get the solution, long extension cord, takes hours to do a whole floor, and blah, blah, blah. No, spot carpets every single day. And here's how you take care of your spotted and stained up 
hallway carpets. You tell the room attendant, between room 301 and 318, which is your section that you wanted, well, you gotta keep your section up. And if you're in housekeeping, you're in the business of cleaning what? Everything, everything in your path. Constantly paying attention to what's clean or dirty. The reason you have spots and stains is you put it off. Well, if you're starting to get some spots, gee, I've gotta get that floor tech up there and get those hallway carpets extracted. Why do you have to do that? When it takes 60 seconds to take something as simple as window cleaner, Windex, spray it on the little carpet, just kind of rub it around with your finger a little bit, take your cleaning rag, put the cleaning rag down on top of the little spot after you've sprayed it with a little window cleaner, just alcohol and water, and then take your foot and just step on it and lean with your body weight. Get off the rag, pull up the little rag, and you'll see the spot on the back side of the rag you've lifted or spotted the spot off the tarp, top of the carpet. Extractor is for sucking all the dirt out from the roots of the carpet, from the pad on up. Teach your people how to spot carpet and you make the room attendants responsible for spotting carpet. You're right there in front of the room, you see the spot, you do something about it. You don't walk off when the hotel's dirty in your section that you demand to have, that you must have, or you won't be happy, you want that section, you keep up the spotting on the carpets. Oh, we don't have time to dust the hallway, doorway tops and the artwork and the air conditioner at the end of the hall. Oh yes, you do, because you're gonna be very productive. See, I'm teaching you how to teach your people how to be productive. So you come up and down that hallway at least four times every single day. In the morning when you go to your closet to pull your cart out and start doing your work. At lunchtime, you come back down that hallway to go to lunch. After lunch, you go back up to the floors and you go right back down that hallway to get back into your rooms to finish your work. And at the end of the day, what do you do? You walk down that hallway all the way to get on the elevator to go down and go home. So what do you do? You use that time productively. That's when you dust the hallways and the artwork and the air conditioner at the end of the hall and the baseboards. Show me the feather duster wand. Give it to me. Ta-da, this little bad boy right here. <gasps> yes, you can go and you can run it down along the artwork. You can run it around the door jams. You just take it along as you walk, you just drag it along the baseboards, using the time productively with your duster. Oh, I just love these things. Lamb's wool, who knew? Teach people how to efficiently, productively, and quickly spot your hallway carpets. Teach your people how to do their dusting, when to do the dusting, and give them the tool to do the dusting with. It's real easy. Now doorways, doorways. So I've just come from check-in and I'm walking down the hallway and I see a maid's cart there in front of the door and as I walk by, the door is open. And so what am I going to do? What everybody does, I'm gonna look in the room to see what the rooms look like. And what do I see? A great vacant clean room that's ready to go for me to check in? No, that's not what I see at all. I see towels piled up in front of the door to hold the door open. I see pillowcases on the floor and the room attendant is stepping on them. I see sheets all bundled together wrapped in a big sheet, using it like a garbage bag, and that's sitting in the middle of the floor. The housekeeper thinks, I think a houseman will come pick this up for me or whatever. I see a dead room service tray and I can smell those old nasty overnight, leftover overnight chicken wings or that ugly, nasty, brilliant orange sauce, skanky and skeevy. That's my first impression. Coming down the hallway is a dirty room. Perceptions, boo. Guess perceptions. You're already showing something that they cannot give over. You're breaking that rule. Here's the other rule you're breaking. Cleanliness is the lack of evidence that anybody's been in these hotel rooms before me. I go down and I look and I see in through this open door, oh my God, somebody's been in these rooms before me. Already, because of how you allow your room attendants to operate in your hallways with your doors, you're ruining the perception of the cleanliness of the hotel. I guarantee you in their subliminal, in their subtle mind, when they go to fill out that comment card online or whatever they do now, they're gonna remember the dirty room. They don't think, oh wait, consciously I remember seeing the room dirty. No, it's an impression that you gave them. You gave them that impression by letting them look in and see a dirty room. Guest doesn't know what they're looking at, but they see it. Never let a guest see something that they can't get over. Clean is the 
absence of evidence that anybody has been in these hotel rooms before. Why do room attendants like the doorways open when they're working? Very simple. Guest room key, guest room lock. The room attendant, if you tell them, keep the doors closed, keep the doors closed, that means they gotta take my key in and out of my 13, 14, 15 rooms every day. I gotta use that key in there and that wears your door locks out and your key card strips on your master keys but they go in and out all day with the keys. It slows them down, it is meticulous, it's a pain in the ass. They put it in there and they just automatically move, they think it's open, it's not, and they smash themselves and their glasses on the door. I mean, that stuff's real. Think about your room attendants. You don't want the door open, they want the door open. So like any negotiation with your staff, it has to be a win, win situation. You get an open door, I get a closed door. How do I do that? I do that with the clever use of the, where is it? Oh, the bone. Let me get you a bone. I have obtained the sacred bone. It is now in my right hand. Let me get situated here where I am comfortable again. This is a bone. Nothing more than a cleaning rag. See, cleaning rag with blue painter's tape wrapped around it. You just put it by the door post on the side and then the door closes on it, keeping the door open about that far. So the room attendant can come and go without doing what? Having to go, híjole, you know, with the, with the key card. Just get a regular old, you know, you're ready to throw it away, wash, you know, cleaning rag, not a washcloth. Ooh, don't let me catch you using a, a wash rag. They get an open door, that's a win for them. I get my doors pulled to or closed so people can't look in. I win, they win, I win. Not only that, in the morning, what do your room attendants do? They go down the hallway and start checking vacant, dirty rooms. Why? Because they wanna go in and get the tips as soon as they can get them before the housemen get there. I know what be going on. So what do they do if they don't have a tool? They open up the door and then they go in and the door closes behind them and boom, door closes. Who hears that? The guest across the hall, the guest in the room below, and the guest in the room above. Boom! And then they go to the next vacant, dirty room. They open the door, they just go in. The door just pulls to behind them. Boom! Door closing. Then they leave. Boom! That's four booms, and they've only checked two rooms. And you can hear it on that floor, the floor above, and the floor below. But what's going on on the floor above? There's another room attendant, actually two room attendants on each floor. Boom, 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 all morning long. Bone! Open the door, set the bone down. What do you got to lose? It's a win-win for everybody. Make the bones and give it to the room attendants. Never let a guest see something they can't get over. Cleanliness is the lack or absence of evidence anybody's been here. So open doors, you ruin both of those. A guest doesn't know what they're looking at, but they see it. So why give them something obvious already? Their intuitive perceptions are judging and gauging and measuring everything they do in that hotel. Every minute they're there, every step they take, everything that their hand touches and that they look at, they judge it and their perceptions take over. Okay, let me tell you the other reason uh, why it is you want your door closed. For this, I'm gonna need my little calculator. I have owned this calculator uh, after 18 years in hotels. I've used it since day one. Good old Texas instrument, old school. Buttons, clickety click. So we're gonna need that to work on our productivity. When you have guest room doors open, um, there's another totally different reason that you might not expect why a room attendant would have a guest room door open. Why? They think that it's faster. Because if they have, you know, when you look down a hallway, usually the doors are put together in quadrants of four. Two doors on this side, two guest rooms, and two guest rooms here. It's how they lay out the hotel. The doors are together. It's part of the architectural design. Then you go the length of a room. There's four more doors down here in your hallway. So they'll position themselves in the center here between two doors there and two doors here. They'll open up all four doors. Why? They think it's faster to work on four rooms at a time. Initially, this sounds like it might make sense. Let's see how we do when we know our numbers and do the math. So what does the room attendant do? The room attendant goes in this room with a bag and she clears out, strips all her trash. Then she goes around the, the, the door there to the next open door. We have four doors open, two on each side, right? She goes around the corner to the next room, 
strips the trash, goes across the hall. This one strips trash, goes to door number four, strips the trash. And then, then they usually do something, you know, not so, not so bright. They'll tie that trash bag up and leave it sitting in the hallway for the houseman. Now the guest comes down the hallway. Ooh, what do those rooms look like? Ooh, they're all dirty. Ooh, they're standing on the, t on the pillowcases I'm going to sleep on. Oh, look, there's a room service tray. Ooh, I can smell those nasty chicken wings and that bright orange, gooey, greasy, nasty overnight smell. I haven't even gotten to my room yet. Already, in my perception, this is a dirty room. And now I've got four rooms to look at. Oh my God, all of the rooms in this hotel are dirty. To get my point here, you have to understand productivity. All right, my, my room attendants do 13 rooms a day. They do eight hours on the floor. Eight divided by 13 hours divided by rooms gives me a productivity factor of 0.615. How long is 0.615? Because this is going to tell me how long that each room attendant has to clean a room. How long is that? I take the 0.615 and I multiply it times 60 minutes and I get ah, 36.9, let's call it 37 minutes per room. But keep in mind, this room attendant is not cleaning one room at a time which the room attendant should do. Why? Because she cleans the room from stem to stern. Then she goes to the phone and puts in the code or however it is you do it uh, to notify the, the hotel operating system that the room is now vacant and clean and ready for check-in. Now with that happening, I have one room in 37 minutes, but I have 17 room attendants on the floor, right? That means in essence, especially early in the morning because vacant dirty rooms your priority clean those first then occupied you don't go door to door and just clean whatever's available you're constantly pushing the second a room becomes vacant and dirty from checkout you're going to that room next you're going to travel a little but you're going to get your rooms done before three o'clock i have 17 rooms that should be clearing and turning vacant clean starting at eight eight o'clock by 8 45 in the morning i should have 17 new vacant clean rooms rooms in the system. But I don't have that if my room attendants are holding up four rooms while they clean the bathrooms in each room, then while they make the beds in each room, then while they do the dusting in each room, then while they do this and vacuum in each room. All right, so it's going to take you no matter what, whether you do them four rooms at once or one room at a time, it's going to take you 37 minutes per room. I know I have taken a stopwatch and timed every duty that must be done in the room and I have come to 37 minutes. So let's do the math, right? Four rooms times 37 minutes. It's going to take that much time in each room. Whether you do them one at a time or four at a time, it's 37 minutes per room. That's 148 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour, that's 2.46. That means it's gonna take two hours to get one room. So if I start at eight o'clock, I don't get vacant clean rooms until 10 o'clock. If every room attendant in the building is doing this four rooms at a time thing, two hours. But if they do them one at a time in two hours, four rooms times 17 housekeepers by 10, 10, 15, how many rooms will I have vacant clean in my system? 68 rooms, 68. <laughs> Know your numbers, be productive. Here's another problem that we have, junk on the hallway floors. So a guest calls the front desk and they say, hello, I have uh, gathered my rubbish and am ready to deploy the rubbish and discard it into the building. What shall I do? Front desk is gonna say, oh, just just put it in the hallway outside your door. Uh, 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 housekeeping will pick it up. They don't know the rhythm and they're busy. They're not going to call housekeeping and go, go pick up the trash outside of 215. Probably one out of 10 times they'll remember why. That's front desk. I've been a front desk agent. I know what the truth is. And then they had to wait an hour to get their rooms. Why? Because people are doing four rooms at a time. All right, here's a good one. Cover your houseman carts. Just go to Bed Bath & Beyond uh, and uh, buy some black sheets or buy a maroon or burgundy sheet, a color that works with the color scheme in your hotel hallways, right? 
but get a big old queen sheet. No, do not use a regular guest room sheet. There again, we have the optic. Oh, they're using my guest room sheet to cover a dirty bin of trash or to cover a dirty bin of, you know, dirty linen and terry. Have your housemen always have their houseman carts covered neatly. Same thing. Room attendant leaves the cart. If she can't get it into her, her closet, sometimes closets aren't big enough for everybody to put their cart in there at once. You know, just whatever, all that stuff. If you're gonna leave it in the hallway, cover it with a nice burgundy sheet. So it's just one nice covering on it, nice and neat, and it keeps the guests from coming by and taking 14 shampoos and nine rows of toilet paper because they're neurotic and they got problems and they got to have a lot of toilet paper or whatever it is. Hey, you know, the guests are like that sometimes. You and I both know that. Cover it with a beautifully colored sheet. It just says, stay out of my cart. It's covered. It's supposed to be covered. No access. Cover your carts, cover your houseman carts, and keep things looking neat and tidy in the hallways. Oh, and while I got this remote in my hand, let me tell you a little secret about TV remotes. Here we go, little secret. All right, the TV remote. I'm just gonna teach you a little secret here. A lot of people don't know this. I share this with people at the front desk when I'm down there, because like at night, front desk has got to figure out remote problems, you know, maybe after midnight when we don't have maintenance. So we have a TV remote problem. We try to turn on the TV and it won't work. The first inclination is to take the batteries out and change the batteries. Boom, now it's working. But what happens when you have a remote? Sometimes I've gotten, I've received brand new remotes that have a problem. They're just defective. They don't work. You change the batteries. You think this is going to be great. My remote's going to work now. And you go to turn the TV on and off and it doesn't work. Oh no, new batteries and it still doesn't work. How do you know if your TV remote works? Because at the end of the TV remote is a little glass, a little circular bubble. Uh, it's the infrared camera bubble. So that's when you're gonna get out your cell phone, right? These infrared uh, lights are only seen through a filtering device that's digital or electronic. Your eye cannot see. Look, I'm just doing it. Do you see any light at the end of that? No, you don't. So what you're gonna do is, you're going to open up your cell camera. Yes, you are. And you're going to hold the TV remote behind your, uh, your, your cell phone. And I can see the little uh, electronic eye right here in the cell phone. When my remote is defective or broken, and, it, and it's just broken, doesn't matter if you have new batteries or not, I press this button, nothing happens. But when I press this button and the remote is good and I've got good batteries in it, it lights up. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a little bit closer for you. When I hold it up to my cell phone and I push a button on the remote, ah, there it is, and I see that infrared light light up, I know the remote is good, I have another problem. Hallways, doorways, and perceptions. See the hotel through the guest eyes. I know that's cliche, but do it. We get so used to doing our jobs that we start getting real sloppy and real whimsical about the things we think we can get away with. Clean is the absence of any evidence that anybody's been in the hotel. Don't show a guest or let them see something that they cannot get over. The hotel guest, they don't know what they're looking at but they see it and they see it every time. Hallways, doorways, and perceptions. Pay attention. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com. <laughs>